The Nigerian Senate has considered a bill that seeks to prohibit the payment and receipt of ransom for the release of any person kidnapped, imprisoned or wrongfully confined. According to the bill, Nigerians who pay ransom to kidnappers and the kidnappers who receive ransom risk 15 years imprisonment. The Terrorism Prevention Bill of 2021, which scaled its second reading during plenary, is sponsored by Senator Ezenwa Francis Onyeuchi. The lawmaker said the piece of legislation seeks to amend the Terrorism Act of 2013 to outlaw the payment of ransoms to abductors, kidnappers or terrorists for the release of any person who has been wrongfully confined, imprisoned or kidnapped. Well, joining us to discuss this bill is a journalist and public affairs analyst, Adeni Yukunu. Good to have you on the morning show, Adeni. Welcome. Thank you very much for having us. I say good morning to you're, you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Well, here it is. A 15-year imprisonment, a risk of a 15-year imprisonment for somebody who could be found to be paying a ransom. Surely this has come with mixed reactions from lawyers and lawmakers themselves, you'd, you'd imagine, because it, what it seeks to do is definitely stop payments and stop negotiations with terrorists. But in the process, it puts victims of these crimes at risk of imprisonment themselves. So where do you lie on this side? Do you see the holistic approach or do you think that this is just a, an example of stray bullets hitting innocent people? Well, I, I have to begin with uh, more or less saying that it is intended at the outset to be an improvement, uh, according to the lawmakers, uh, to what we've had as the Terrorism Prevention Act of 2013. So the one for 2021 is to actually address certain concerns. And what Senator Nyungu Chizinwa brought forward has three parts. Uh, you mentioned it. The first part, anybody who makes a transfer. Second, anybody who receives payment and of course, anybody will collude. The proposition to me would have made sense if what was left there had to do with anybody will collude. Mm -hmm. uh, on a couple of occasions or a number of occasions, it has to be said that it's been found out that some of the ab abductors uh, actually colluded with a member of the family to get them abducted. And that to me is a sour taste on somebody's lips in terms of you know, people who themselves are criminals, and they just call some people to collude with them. So I would not have had an issue uh, if the proposition were just to face those who collude. But when it comes to payments, it gives me a big reason for concern. And this will make me go back to, you know, a series of abductions that we've had in the country, from the Chibok girls to the Dapchi girls, uh, to the Kankara boys, and of course, uh, some other ones that are scattered around the country. Now, I remember very well that after the Chibo girls were kidnapped and the Jonathan administration had a lot of challenges, you know, leading up to the time that we have the current administration, a very brilliant investigative journalist with um, a particular print medium did an investigation and found out that the government paid a million dollars for each of those that were actually released. And I must say this also, that there are you know, other concerns in terms of the government actually rescuing people by ensuring that certain payments were made because to government, that could be the last attempt or the last thing they could do to get people out. So a situation where a lawmaker, we should understand better. Now, there's a recent poll that shows that Africa, in Africa, that Nigeria has the highest kidnapping rate because there is, in every state, incidents of kidnapping. It tells you that that's a very bitter pill to swallow. So when a lawmaker goes that way, it gives me real concern that perhaps the man in question doesn't understand that kidnapping itself is a function of many things that hasn't happened as it should. Now, let's, let's talk about some things that we need to bring to the front burner. One of the things that this Senate has not been able to do is twofold that is fundamental to addressing certain issues. Let's look at, for instance, the amendment of the Electoral Act of 2010. We have been talking about that. There has been assurances from the leadership of the Senate. This is me already. They've not touched that. The petroleum industry bill has been there for close to 20 years. They have not deemed it fit to deregulate, but the government is talking about increasing the price of pump petrol to close to 400 naira. Now, these are issues that I was hoping the Senate would press very hard and ensure that this thing scales through. But sadly, as something else is their concern. Now, let us look at the recent kidnapping of the Greenfield students in Kaduna. I want to say here that the parents continue to say 
that those that were actually released were released after they put some money together. And even after they put some money together, they said, well, we can't release them to you despite some of the payment received because we want more money. Now, a situation where they were left, you know, knowing nothing about what to do, but government appears not to understand the next step to take. How do we expect the families of those that have been kidnapped to actually handle the situation? So there are certain things that um, the lawmakers make proposition on that I find really ridiculous, inconsiderate, and inhuman. And I must say very clearly here that that particular bill that has gone through second reading must be rescinded, must be withdrawn, and re-amended and the proposition represented so that it will only reflect those who collude with abductors and not those who pay. Because a situation where you call on your government and your government appears to be, okay, let us look at... Uh, Leah Sharibu now, who has been made a mother. She's been there for some years now. And government did not, up until this moment, has not given us a strategy for getting Leah Sharibu out. So it tells you what is the nature of the negotiation that government makes such that they are able to get the person who is kidnapped out, such that it doesn't begin to generate such reactions as they feel, is this supposed to be some kind of religious issue where they release Muslims and they leave Christians? No, that's not what it should be. So the communication by the inaction of government itself is an issue for me, and I feel that the lawmakers who are closest to their constituents and understand where the shoe pinches really should do better than what we find. So, sincerely speaking, I don't accommodate and I don't countenance this position by Senator Onyewuchi. I really like your point uh, about the fact that, you know, the, um, the bill should be amended to, to state that it should be those who collude with uh, payment of ransom. Because you know that in recent time, the government have been known to pay huge sums of money uh, in form of ransom to kidnappers and bandits. I mean, what's your reaction to that in terms of what they have been doing so far? They have been known to pay uh, ransom. See, I tell you, uh, my sister, that um, if anybody must actually make certain proposition, the person must really be careful. The union which that actually proposed that is from a region of the country where kidnapping itself is rampant. Uh, Lagos is not safe. Only yesterday, uh, there's a particular friend who put something up on the social media that I confirmed. Just along Ikate here, they kidnapped somebody who was supposed to be the chief security officer for, you know, a very important personality in Nigeria in this, in this country. And ransom was paid only yesterday, yes, to get that person out. So when you talk about government, government itself up until this moment uh, is still grappling with how it could deal with the recurrent incidences of kidnapping. And because of that, government has continued to, even if we are told they don't pay ransom, government has continued to, one way or the other, just get these people uh, off their faces by paying them. Do not forget that certain things have happened recently where in Zamfara State, it was clearly put out uh, where we learned, and it's something that those who perhaps could do their research would find, that the government of Zamfara, in order to ameliorate the incidences of or the recurrent incidences of kidnapping, have certain amounts given to some of the bandits and kidnappers, as well as uh, those who have made life very miserable. And even I learned that at some point, most of them even drive Prado jeeps around. And this uh, happens to be coming from you know the post of government. So when government uh, holds a position. But the, lawmakers, the lawmaker is now trying to propose what to make the citizens, the criminals, instead of those who are the victims of this kidnapping, then I think it is a very unfair deal uh, against the people that really uh, have supported this administration to get to where it is. So I think very strongly that government must begin to think out of the box, and thinking out of the box takes a lot that you must do. If you look at every sphere of society now, there is disaffection. The disaffection is not wholly caused by this administration. Of course, it's something that was carried into this administration, and this administration itself appears to have done an extra to it. Just look at the death, for instance, of the chief of army staff. The matter is not over. Look at the death of Arotile. If you look at all of these things happening, I think we really need to dig deep to find out, are some people benefiting from this country's insecurity problems that seem to have left the citizens on their own at the time of crisis? So if you look at it, when the investigation was done and it was revealed that government paid a million dollars for the release, I believe, of the cheaper girls, those who were out, 
the investigative journalist that did that was incarcerated for a period of time. They were asking him, what's your source? And the man said, I cannot disclose my source, but it's confirmed. So it tells you that government may not need to argue much in terms of the fact that we already know that government one way or the other uh, pay for people to get released. And I still don't know why some people won't get released, especially the Leah Sharibu incidents that I talked about. So I think that government must rethink its position on this. The executive arm of government has its responsibility. And if you look at it, it appears as if it's even a disarray. Don't forget that kidnapping is connected to incidences of insecurity. Banditry is connected to incidences of insecurity. Boko Haram is also connected to the incidences of insecurity. So if you look at the crimes that I've mentioned, these issues are connected to insecurity and rather than always pay ransom, and I think that governments must rethink its position in any way that government continues to countenance this. Let me also tell you one other interesting part. For the past three weeks to one month, Shea Gumi has become, you know, the unofficial spokesperson for these bandits, these kidnappers, these abductors, and his position has always been that government should negotiate with them. Don't forget, my sister, that the the uh, Terrorism Prevention Act of 2013 has been there. So why is it that some of the, some of the, some of the issues that have already been, been documented are not given life to, so that Nigeria refuses to really negotiate? Because it has come to a point where the people that they are proposing we negotiate with are those who are not even willing to repent. If you negotiate with somebody, for instance, and the person seizes from crime, more or less like those who perhaps get executive pardon when they're in prison. You're expected to get a pardon and not go back to crime. But when you negotiate with these people and ransom is paid, they don't, get, they don't stop these criminal activities. They only move to another place and continue. So what then is the essence of negotiating and paying ransom for people if those who collect the ransom will not cease from their crimes? And I think that that is where government must begin to rethink its stand, not against the citizen in terms of imprisoning them. So that's another thing I want to say. Mm. I mean, it's, I, I really did enjoy it. I think Oji and I can both, I can speak for Oji, but say we really did enjoy that answer because as you said, you know, you've got characters like Shegumi who do play a mediator role or perhaps even would fall into the category of collusion in terms of being the middle party between bandits and the victims' families. And as you've said, it does look as though the government do need to think outside of the box when it comes to tackling the real cause of these issues. But, you know, in, your, in the early part of your answer, as I just said, you mentioned the government does need to think outside of the box. And I want to ask you, what would that look like? What is an example of that thinking outside of the box that they aren't already doing? Fantastic. Now, let me say this. The, there's a word or a statement that goes that all politics are local. Secondly, every security network must be local. I keep saying this anytime I have the opportunity to. For instance, let us look at the way the police itself is structured. A man who has lived all his life in the north suddenly joins the Nigeria police force and the person gets redeployed to Bayelsa state and they got redeployed to the creeks of Bayelsa state. And this man has not seen so much water all his life. But the man had to always go by boat from one part of where he's stationed to the other. And the man has to go on water to some, you know, some interior parts of the creeks of Bayelsa just to provide security for people. The man in question has never been to this area, doesn't speak the language of the people, doesn't understand the cultural values of the people. I think that those are even subtractions in the first place. And no matter how the government, especially the federal government, wants to hold on to security and want to insist that the police of this country be administered from Abuja, I think the security situation will continue to escalate negatively. What I'm saying by implication is this. It is time, sadly, oh. for us to take... No, we're not all done. We're not no. done. We are just going to take a short break. Yes. All right. uh, and when Let's we come back, we will continue with this and we'll let you land on your thoughts exactly. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Morning Show. Still with us is journalist Adeni Kunu. We're discussing uh, the 15-year uh, jail term uh, that was proposed for people that are uh, involved in ransom payment. You know, the Senator Ezingwa Francis uh, Onyewuchi raised alarm. Let's talk about this topic, that kidnapping has become a fast and lucrative business. He said it has now remained the most virulent form of banditry in Nigeria. 
and the most pervasive and intractable violent crime in the country. As security forces and the Nigerian army are battling with insecurity, the unemployed youth are also turning uh, uh, into kidnapping for money. What, what would you, should the government begin to do now as our security forces are battling uh, with insecurity? All right, uh, I was saying something before and I think I want to round off that trade. Sure, sure go ahead. Now the first thing that government must do is um, to first of all understand the dynamics of allegiance. When somebody talks about loyalty, especially in security, there has to be a level of connection for the person to actually ensure that you gain the allegiance of people. Let me imagine, for instance, that this is Enugu State, and the commission of police for Enugu State, for instance, comes from Zamfara State. And the person in question doesn't even speak a word in Igbo language. That is the first subtraction for the allegiance that the person in question will get. No matter what officialdom requires of the commission of police in Enugu State, who originates from Zamfara State, the man will not get 100% allegiance from his subordinates because there is a disconnection in terms of values. And let me tell you, government must stop, and I say must stop being insincere with what can help solve security problems. One of the things that help in this area is that the person who is from there, look across the 36 states of the Federation, you'll find out that there are a good number of commissioners of police who are not from there. And that is why we say that the first solution to the problem of insecurity is to review the nature of the Niger police force. It is very key. When people raise the issue about state police, the federal government ran to create community policing. And the question I want to ask you, how did they recruit the community police that we have? They actually released, I think, about three or 13 billion naira for that. And I didn't see a comprehensive blueprint for how community police will function such that they assist in fighting these crimes that we continue to have in our respective localities. The first thing is that the Niger police must be reviewed. If the federal government still wants police force, no problem. But there must be legislation. And that's what I expect the likes of Oye Wuchi and other lawmakers as led by Ahmed Lawan at the Senate and of course Femi Bajabi Amele at the House of Representatives to make very, very important, of the highest importance, is the need to create state police. Let people stop telling me that governors will use state police against blah, blah, blah. I don't want to hear that. The first reason for creating state police is to ensure that they fight this problem locally. And let me tell you, a man who comes from Bronu will not stick his neck out to die when it comes to the problems of those in actually a particular state. Let me shock you about what happened in the Ikodu axis of Lagos sometime last week. Ikodu, for instance, is becoming the hotbed of courtism in Lagos. And what happened, there was a day last week that they had to go to the, um, the DPO in some of the police stations and say they are warning them not to come out for two days, that if they do, they'll be in trouble. Do you know what happened? All the police officers left the streets. They didn't come out because they were afraid of courtes. It tells you something. If you check those that were actually, you know, on the service or those that are the police officers there, majority of them or half of that, they are not from here. So what happens, they cannot give allegiance to serve fully to fight this crime because they feel, I no go die. Make I, go, make I no go go back to my own village. So you can't get the needed commitment and allegiance from the police fighting crime in another state that is not from, as the police will fight the crime from there. So if there's anything that is needed now, first of that is to ensure that state police becomes legal in this country, that the governors are the overseers. For instance, now, the Police Service Commission has a hand in promotion of officers, but the IG's promotion and appointments is left with the president of the country. What kind of structure is that? Accountability is affected. The commissioners of police, for instance, will never take instruction regarding security from them, except they go to the IG, who in turn reports to the executive arm of government, whose leader is the president of the country. You cannot operate a functional police system by doing that. The second thing, I must say this, the second thing, we continue to have an increment in the number of those who are jobless. Let me tell you, survival instinct is what everybody is born with. 
Although some of us have the ability not to commit crime, to control ourselves when there is a problem, when there's no job, but young people usually are despondent in the absence of a source of livelihood. And the government must be transparent enough to put those who are genuinely out of job or genuinely jobless on certain amounts so that they can at least be able to meet basic needs up until the time where they will get a, a, a good job to actually take care of themselves. Look at what is being proposed in the U.S., for instance, now. They should be getting in excess of about $3,000 from July the 16th. They are considering parents with a certain number of children and with certain ages. Is it a crime for Nigeria to do that? It's not a crime. For instance, we continue to repatriate looted funds. Can government just deploy some of these funds to help? Because let me tell you, if you don't stop crime and crime comes and people taste that crime as something lucrative, they won't stop. And we have more young ones in this country, ages 30 downwards or 35 downwards, about 55 to 60% of the entire population of the country. That is a proportion of the country that you cannot allow to get into crimes because you can't manage it. Just look at the way people are beginning to have appeal now for internet fraud. I was on an investigation to Kwansi, that was about two weeks ago. I saw a 24-year-old with three laptops and two others are about the same age. They caught them in very terrible internet scheme. What I'm telling you is a lot of young persons are beginning to taste internet fraud or taste crimes and they found it that is very, is, is, is very tasty. So taking them off it means that there has to be a provision for them not to go back into that criminal act. So the question will be, what is the other alternative that government is providing for people not to commit crime? Is there stipend that they get every month? What about some little, little things they could do? And if you look at it, government also must come very sincerely. Government, I have to say, may not be able to provide all of what is needed by citizens, but there are certain key things that government can do. Look at all the roads, for instance. I recently drove from Abuja to Lagos on one of my trips, and I can tell you clearly that even the roads are not very good. When roads are not good, you ask the question, how do people apply for safety? When there are no street lights on the road at night, how do people feel safe? Even electricity in the past couple of weeks has been very terrible. Because, so there are basic things that I think government can do that people could begin to take initiative to help resolve some of the problems of um, unemployment around them. And until government thinks out of the box, as I said, and takes this start beginning with a complete restructure of the police. I don't know why the federal government is afraid. There is a problem. You cannot continue to do find solution to the same problem the same way, and if it's not providing solution, you continue that way. I don't think anybody succeeds that way. So and I think that that is a recommendation that must be thought through because that is the out-of-box move that has to be made to resolve these issues. Understood, understood. We only have less than a minute left. Okay. Um, I do want to ask you about uh, Senator Onyeuchi himself. He did, in fact, uh, well, perhaps rather we, we have answered that question when it, when it comes to that. I, very, very quickly, I do want to get your thoughts on open grazing. We do know that earlier this week, Governor Akira Dolu uh, said that there was definitely going to be an outright ban. And as a result, you had the Attorney General uh, make some comments and comparisons between open grazing to spare parts trading. And clearly, lots of people may have interpreted that as a dig to southern populations uh, oper opening up shop in the north of the country. What are your thoughts on that in, in 30 seconds or less? Malami has goofed. It's an exclusive and an executive goof for Malami to have actually done that. A man of his level of knowledge, a man who is a lawyer, should understand that there's no basis for comparison. No matter where you find an Igbo man or anybody who trades in spare parts, they pay for shops or they pay for the spaces. Cattle rearing is also private business. You therefore cannot take people or allow people go into other people's farms or land to graze their animal, or they allow their animals feed. It, 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 it's absolutely ridiculous. When I saw that story, I just told myself, it's shameful that a man of his stature and level should say such a thing. Right. There's no basis for comparison. Understand. And I think that we should not allow that stand. Thank you very much. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure.